All right, let's, uh, it's 11.05. Let's go ahead and start. Uh, welcome to the coaches call for April 4th. And the uh, topic uh, that we're going to cover, we'll cover anything you would like, but the topic we put down for today was um, tips for players. Um, and there, there are some, some pretty good tips. Um, if you've watched some of the, the videos that we've done, I, um, I think Caitlin has come up with some really good ones as well. Uh, but Stephen and I are on today, and we'll share our knowledge. Um, my involvement um, with CCDC, I think, uh, can also apply to to NCL. Um, that uh, the the value of practice and the the value of experience, of learning through experience. Um, so Stephen, let's uh, let's have you start off by talking about what is it that you um, tell your players when they're playing for the first time. Okay. Uh, first of all, let me. Uh, our, our, all of our classes are online, so we have no face-to-face -face classes. So it can always be a challenge. Our only face-to-face -face class, which actually I just kind of use Zoom or go to meeting uh, or uh, Blackboard Collaborate, is with our uh, high schools at Mass Clara. But the rest of the students are all over the uh, the country. And uh, so uh, it's, it's sometimes uh, they feel like they're isolated. So uh, uh, for the individual uh, games, we talk, we, first of all, we talk about making sure that uh, uh, you reserve the time uh, for the preseason and, and the regular season. And then when we get into the teams, we actually have team meetings and, and we'll talk about how we're going to uh, uh, reserve time uh, during the, uh, the uh, postseason uh, uh, competition. So, and I re say that reserve the time because it's put that on your calendar, make sure you have that time allocated. Uh, some of the problems we've had in the high schools, for example, uh, is that some of our students are also participate on basketball, football, whatever. And, uh, so like on the, the team uh, sessions or in the individual, they need to make sure that they don't have conflicts with those, with those times. So they get their excuse uh, that they're not going to be attending that particular uh, athletic and they're gonna, they're gonna be attending our athletic, uh, which is the, uh, the NCL competition. Uh, the other thing that we, uh, uh, we talk about is getting ready with the, uh, uh, during the gym that you've prepared, but keep, keep uh, we ask our students to keep a log of everything that they've accomplished and then areas that they need to, to work on. And uh, this way, uh, it's part of that uh, understanding they need to uh, uh, keep that log with them when they're, when they're playing. That'll help them in, uh, uh, in actually completing the different uh, uh, capture the flags or puzzles. Uh, so we tell them, it's a good thing to uh, uh, to try to work on the areas that you know first and try to solve those problems first. Uh, if you get stuck on something, don't stay on that problem. Uh, I've seen, and this both for individuals and teams, I've seen students that get hung up and they just won't give up and they ended up wasting a lot of uh, pressure's time. So time management's real important. You can always go back to that uh, problem that you can't resolve uh, if you have time, but let go try to uh, answer the ones that you know and that you can, and then go back uh, and pick up the ones that may be more challenging. Uh, the other area is uh, on the puzzles. At the end of, of, the, of your uh, competition, there's a survey, especially on the team, and uh, you need to complete that survey because it is worth some points. So a lot of times students forget that and it, by not completing that survey could knock you out of a certain uh, ranking. So it's good to, to uh, uh, although there's, uh, you know, I have mixed feelings about should that really be counting uh, as a lot of points. But anyway, in some cases, I think it's the 300 or 100 points or something like that. So it's a good thing to keep the, them to understand they can, Fill that out. <clears throat> the other uh, thing, of course, is, and Caitlin's pretty good about talking about this, is uh, getting your team, uh, uh, make sure they have enough rest before the competition, 
make sure they have a, the food and a, a good environment. Uh, so, uh, and let, uh, you know, try to keep from having interruptions if you possibly can. Uh, with, uh, with online, then you're going to probably be at your own home if you're an online student. Uh, maybe you're in your, you may have a, uh, your own bedroom or your office or whatnot. So I have the office I, in, at home, so I do the competition from there uh, and let everybody know that I'm not going to come out of that room until the competition's over with. Uh, the uh, other, th if you're face to face, it could be a little bit, uh, depends if you have a lab that you go to uh, and work from that. I know our students at Mascular High School, they actually come to their lab and uh, work uh, and compete. So uh, their instructor is there, their teacher, uh, to help monitor to make sure that there's uh, they're working on their own in those in those uh, in the individual competition in the team competition, uh, Mr. Rayner, the, the science teacher there, uh, coordinates those just like he would we do online. Let me see what else. Uh, I think. Listen, let me let me let me stop you for a, a minute. One topic that I wanted to bring up today was the Slack channel. Um, I was working with some students who are playing for the first time, and I was um, during the uh, the preseason. I was showing them the Slack, and the Slack channel was really active um, during the gym, not even before preseason, but just uh, when the gym opened up, the Slack channel was getting very active. So, is is Slack uh, the Slack channel something you encourage um, your players to uh, to use, and how do they use it? We do encourage them to use that. And actually from back in 2014, when we first started participating, uh, we had two students that were uh, working at H uh, at the Hewlett Packard uh, help desk in Rio Rancho, New Mexico, and they use Slack there. So that's, we started using Slack and we have an account for uh, our NCL teams at, at Eastern New Mexico university uh, there in Redosa. Uh, at, but the, then you also have the Slack channel for uh, the NCL, which is really helpful as well. So one of the nice things about Slack is that we've, uh, you actually get a log of everything that's transpired. So we go back uh, and, and you can go back and review that, uh, that log. Uh, if there's areas where there's, uh, uh, you have problems and uh, for our team competition, we use this very heavily so that, we use a recap and we look at the logs from the past games as well to kind of see what went on, how the, the approaches they took, uh, decision making that they, that was, uh, uh, was made in, in uh, uh, trying to enter in what they thought was the solution. Uh, and so it's kind of interesting to, uh, to look at that. So I'm really, a, we really promote Slack at, at our campus for this. Great. And another thing I mentioned to them is that you know, before they play the game, you know, they can collaborate with each other. So the, the knowledge that they have, they can gain going up together when they're in practice mode. Obviously, when they're in game mode, they're on their own. They have to just play their own game. But how do you encourage them to work together during practice? Well, that's a good, good question. Part of uh, the, uh, uh, the, the classroom uh, environment uh, for our, our course, it's a capstone where, we act, where it's required for them to uh, participate. They actually have some team activities they have to, so they do collaborate and, uh, and get some grades on. But as far as the, the, the competition uh, teams that are not uh, doing this as part of a classroom, uh, we just encourage them to uh, take advantage uh, of uh, and we kind of introduced them to the different uh, uh, past uh, participants. So we have a couple, uh, two or three uh, members from the the game before the 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 uh, uh, competition from the the fall season or even back uh, two seasons ago. And they, I say, this is a good source of. Uh, uh, of information and you need to collaborate with these uh, students to get uh, uh, insight on how to, this is for the new students. And that at the high school, that's, that's really going uh, well because the seniors have really stepped up to help the, uh, uh, 
the juniors that are just starting uh, with the uh, with the NCL. Great. Um, I want to remind those that are um, listening in, please use the chat window with any questions that you have. If you uh, click raise your hand, we can recognize you that way. But the chat window means that everyone can see what your question is. So uh, don't hesitate if you have a question to um, use the chat. Uh, we really want to receive your questions and, and your input. So Stephen, now you're at the point where the um, preseason has started, correct? Yep. Yes, that's right. We it started. Uh, how much time? How, how much time do you ask them to to put in during preseason? Is there a fixed amount of time? Does it really vary? It varies on uh, uh, on each student. Uh, based on uh, their experience and uh, so for the uh, actually we start with the gym so there's uh, if they're in one of our classes that require the NCL then they get grade graded on certain gym activities and then uh, and and the instructors have are the coaches so we can monitor what's going on through NCL and look at our students progress and uh, kind of keep them motivated the uh, uh, as far as uh, uh, the, uh, when they're doing the uh, uh, preseason, they're going to get a grade. They have to send in as part of their grade. Uh, they they're required to send in a uh, uh, where they scored at either bronze, uh, silver, or a uh, uh, gold. And then uh, the ones that are not being uh, part of a of a class, uh, then uh, we kind of let them. Uh, kind of work on their own, although they, they seem to uh, like it. There's a team captain, even though it's part of the individual, the, uh, the, there's, a, there's a team captain and a faculty member at Santa Fe Community College that helps uh, uh, coordinate uh, what's going on uh, for their team. But they're not getting any grades for those if, it's, if they're at the uh, at-large type of, uh, uh, of competition at our school. But the grading is one way to, to, to make sure that they're getting, getting that done. And, uh, you know, there's just some, some uh, the students that, do, that perform better are the ones that do all the practicing. And we try to reemphasize that practice make, is what helps you make, makes you a better. When they, Go ahead. When, when they practice, do you give them tools? Do they, are there specific types of software they practice with? Is it, you, you want them to try and solve puzzles without these tools? What are, what are the ways that you use any additional software during practice? They use the tools that they've been uh, using during their, uh, during the course curriculum uh, for their uh, associate's degree or their, their uh, security uh, uh, cert certification of completion. And so uh, <clears throat> we tell them to set up a resources uh, using the Kali Linux. Uh, of course, they, if you have one system, you should set it up on VMbox and, uh, or VMware. And, uh, uh, and so they, we, we kind of have a checklist and they get graded on that to show that they've actually completed this process of getting ready. Uh, and then, uh, of course, they'll use Wireshark, uh, Exploit. Uh, there's a, also, you can go to GitHub and other uh, resources of course, using Google, uh, Caitlin's really, she has a, I've sent out her a list of uh, how to prepare and, and how to perform during the competition. You can get that off of her website. I think it's on, we have a link to her blog on the, uh, on the NCL website. And uh, that is a great, she's got some great tips as being a, uh, she was a student and then now as a, as a coach, uh, she is an excellent resource in what she has on the blog. So I put all my students in contact with her blog and uh, I've got some really positive feedback uh, from the students that it's been very helpful seeing what uh, others have, have to say on the blog plus her, her insight into uh, preparing and, and competing. And you say this is on your NCL uh, website. 
It should be, I think, if you go uh, under the resources tab. Okay. And uh, <clears throat> you'll see uh, uh, classroom resources. And then uh, if you'll scroll down on that classroom, you'll see uh, uh, follow Caitlin, uh, Crypto Kate. You click on that link and that'll get you to her, uh, her blog. Right. If you click on the Crypto Kate link, you go directly to uh, Kate's blog. And, and it's and, been... Um, the other is the Twitter, but go ahead, Stephen. No, that's fine. Uh, so, I th yeah, and then she has a Twitter, uh, and I think you can get that off of the blog. I'm not sure. Uh, okay, thank you. But it's, the, she's been a great resource, uh, and our students relate better to her than they do to some old guy like me. So... <laughs> Provide wisdom and guidance. Yes. <laughs> uh, Stephen, you've had some very successful students over the years. Johnny, I, you know, we've talked about several times. For the ones that are doing really well, what is it that the, the traits that you notice? Is it, you know, uh, the amount of time on task or is it, are there other things you notice as well? But, you know, the, the players that, that really succeed, what is it that they have in common? Okay, well, I, uh, I have several that I think that have been uh, outstanding. Take uh, our first uh, outstanding of Johnny Wright, and, uh, and I still stay in touch with Johnny. And he uh, actually, he's participating again, I think, in the individual uh, because he's going to Excelsior College now. So, but uh, he, he was very persistent and uh, uh, he didn't give up on these on problems. He did a lot of uh, you could, you could monitor his uh, lab work. He worked a lot in the labs to make sure. And we had, a, at that time, we were using NDG Net Labs. So he, he practiced on the labs. Another thing that he was very good at was networking with the other, with other students. You talked about that teamwork. And he would go ask, if he had a problem, he'd ask how they kind of solved or how they went around looking at that problem. And uh, the last time he competed for us, uh, uh, and I can't remember what semester that was, a couple semesters ago when he, before he graduated, he, uh, uh, he had a great uh, team uh, uh, set up and they collaborated uh, quite a bit. And there was one uh, member of that team that uh, she had, uh, she was kind of the silver, a silver. And so they used her as a resource a lot in trying to run uh, problems they had through, through her. So I think, you know, networking and teamwork is a good, is a good thing to do. Uh, we have, uh, uh, and then trying to look at other competitions. Uh, uh, Johnny's done some other competitions just to get the, that practice. Uh, the Sands, uh, that competition that they have, he kind of did that on his own. Uh, and I have a couple other students that are doing that. We actually just finished another, a competition locally that we had. So, uh, and uh, uh, we did one with the uh, uh, Southern Utah uh, University. So I think uh, other, other activities that get you in that mode uh, makes you more successful. Uh, I know uh, I'll just kind of, since Caitlin's not here, I'll just talk, but she, she built on what she learned before. And, and then, uh, so it kind of gets you motivated to, to do better and, uh, and that's kind of the, the mode that, that I think are better students. They just don't, uh, they don't just uh, uh, compete during the competition. A good example, I have another student that's uh, going to graduate this semester. And Matt's been on uh, all during the summer. He's on the, in the, uh, in the uh, uh, labs and solving the puzzles that we put together for our labs all summer long. We have no classes, but he's in there working on it. So, uh, and he just received his CompTIA Security Plus uh, certification. So those are, and, and he said a lot of that comes from the work of just uh, getting ready to compete that made him, uh, he felt like uh, so successful to pass that test on the first uh, go around. That's great. What about for a, a new player who, might get frustrated because they're not able to solve a puzzle. Do you recommend that 
they start off with low-hanging fruit and gain some confidence before yeah. they try and tackle really tough ones? Definitely. Uh, we tell them, first of all, you can get, if it's open source, uh, you can always look on Google. Use Google as a really good uh, resource. And so you should be able, for example, you know, like uh, for encryption or something like uh, or cryptology, uh, a lot of that information, like the Morse code was one of the, one of the ones that from a way back, I remember. And so that was an easy one to, uh, to solve. If you went to Google, you could figure out the Morse code if you weren't already familiar with it. Uh, so you got some easy points that way. Uh, so uh, we try to tell them, don't get frustrated. This is a learning experience and uh, you're not, you know, you're not going to be uh, reprimanded for not doing well. You're, and uh, you're, you're really trying to uh, improve your own uh, skills and abilities and, uh, and the way that you approach problems. So, uh, and I think this is really important. It, the NCL helps those students uh, hone their skills for, for solving a problem and the, and the processes they use for that. And so, uh, I, you know, the other thing is we get testimonials from the other students to, uh, uh, and this, this is really important for our high school students. Uh, they are really apprehensive about this competition to, to start with. And so we have the other students come in and talk about their experience and, uh, and then how, how well uh, they did or ha how well they didn't do and why they're doing it again to try to improve. Do you notice a difference between the high school students and the college students in their approach to it? Uh, sometimes I think the high school students may have less, less fear but also the, the college students obviously have more experience. But do you notice any difference in approaches between the two types of players? Well, yes, I, I think that, uh, like you said, they have, uh, our uh, uh, college students have, have experience. And most, a lot of our, not all, most, but a lot of our students at the community college uh, are working. Some of them are working in the industry. They may not, it may not be in cyber, but it's like a help desk or, uh, we actually have one student in a forensics uh, job, uh, but not, not cyber forensics. It's more of uh, uh, CSI forensics, but still uh, they have that experience. And uh, so they approach the problem and they're, and they're uh, uh, I think a lot of them are used to working uh, with other people and more of a team environment. So when it comes to the team competitions, uh, they seem to be a little bit more organized uh, in the high school, we have this, uh, the high school teacher there that's supporting the students and is actually the coach. Uh, uh, we don't coach the high school students. We let the teachers, uh, and we basically have science teacher that, that takes the lead there. And uh, <clears throat> they, uh, they approach it a little bit different, I think, because uh, they're getting more direction uh, like they, they're looking to that teacher to get more direction than the, the, the uh, students at the community college. They pr pretty much take the ball and run with it. Uh, this competition that we had uh, uh, last week at, with uh, Southern Utah, <clears throat> I just took, and, and it's going to be the same team that participates in the NCL. I told them, you know, you guys, they, they wanted to do this, so they developed the whole thing, they coordinated it, they set everything up, and they ran it themselves. So they're a lot more self-motivated, uh, which I think is a good thing. What about the, the time of day? Do you find that some students do better, you know, practicing late at night? Some students are more day students. Do you do any adjustments for that? Yes, and uh, like at the high school, uh, <clears throat> they uh, seem to do better when they're all uh, at the lab at the high school. There may be some students, if they go home, they don't have the same bandwidth uh, on yeah. the reservation as they would have because we're out in a rural community. And that's the same way even in our, for our uh, college students. Uh, uh, we're in such a rural area, our, our, uh, our networking capabilities are not all the, always the best. So we try to, 
to uh, try to work it around that. The, also, I'd say that uh, uh, we have students that are working, so they have to coordinate that, uh, that yeah. time around their job and whatnot. So uh, I prefer doing the competition early in the morning. I'm kind of a morning person, but we have others that, that would rather uh, work at night. I noticed on our team competitions, what's amazing is these students uh, will stay up 24 hours a day working the team competition. Uh, uh, the two guys I had at Rio Rancho, they were working uh, their, uh, their, I think they were on like a 10 hour day. They worked their 10 hours, get off and, and then hit the uh, NCL uh, team competition. Uh, and it was just amazing to watch their uh, enthusiasm and their persistence. Is there some camaraderie that comes along with playing as a team and you, you maybe want to put in the extra effort to support the team? Oh yeah. And actually, you know, it builds this, uh, that camaraderie and, and uh, a network and like one of our students that went to work for state farm, uh, he's been able to recruit other students. So it's kind of a, it's a good career uh, opportunity for students as well because uh, you're making these, uh, uh, these lasting uh, uh, impressions on different people. And I know that uh, the person that's at State Farm, he's, he knows the people that he, that he uh, was on the, the competition with. And so he's recommended them for uh, positions at, at State Farm. And they're in a multi-factor multi -factor authentication group is where they mainly go. Let's see if uh, the audience has any questions. Uh, please uh, use the chat window. Please raise your hand, and we can unmute you if you want to talk. But um, let's see. see if you have some questions for us. I see Judy is on. Uh, she's with uh, Santa Fe Community College. Hi, Judy. Hi there. Nice to be a part of this. Great. So the the students at Santa at Santa Fe Community College are fantastic students. They we we teach them through our Sun Online program. So, uh, she, you, you can uh, maybe tell us how. And she's got some really great uh, people with experience as well that are that are taking the cyber program. So, uh, I don't know if you have any comments, Judy, but it'd be interesting to get your your uh, uh, impression on this. Well, we basically start off with uh, a Linux course, introductory Linux course, course, and also uh, a programming course. So they have to have some programming experience and Linux experience before they get started. So this is really helpful. Uh, Johnny was uh, our student and he really excelled. And so we kind of went off the idea that they really needed to have uh, some programming experience first because you know, in order to write some of these scripts and things like that um, that's that's kind of where we we approached it from that's a good point the scripting is very important uh, and if you're a CAE school that's one of the areas that you need to uh, show that you're uh, teaching that scripting uh, there's some great uh, uh, curriculum out there for that scripting and it helps the students uh, resolve some of these issues a little bit faster. So that's a good point. Stephen, we have a question. Maybe both you and Judy can take a shot at answering this. What are the must have tools I should install to participate? I have Kelly loaded on a VM to use those tools. Anything else? Well, uh, we, we use, uh, we mainly that's what we're, our main tool is is using Kali with exploit and and uh, uh, Wireshark. Uh, there's also uh, these different tools that you can. Uh, I have a list. I should have brought that list up. I don't think I have it with me. Uh, we have uh, several different uh, tools that Caitlin had put together in her list. If you get that off of her blog you she's got a whole list of uh, like we go to github and those type of uh, uh, sites to get uh, those are resources that we use and tools that we have available uh, in order to, uh, to help our students solve these problems related 
related to that, are there any websites that have tools such as cryptography that are useful? So, you yeah. know, there's John the Ripper. There are some standard crypto tools. Are there some standard ones you have students use? Those are the same ones, and a lot of that's already, uh, we get, cover all of that in the NDG Net Labs or in the InfoSec Labs. Uh, so th those tools are already available, and uh, part of our, uh, those classes, uh, those students already have those loaded on their, uh, on their system as part of that getting ready for having the right resources. Are there websites, any websites that you recommend that have tools? Uh, well, let's see, what was the, uh, I mentioned GitHub has, uh, some inform has tools out there. This, the, the, uh, uh, if you go to the, uh, Cassia website is one that where there's a lot of, uh, tools available, uh, and links to tools on the Cassia. How do you spell that? Uh, let's see. Cassia K with, with a K or well, the link. The link is, do uh, you have that link, Dan? For, uh, yes, I do. I'll, I'll, I'll put it up here. I'm at Cassia, but I want to find the tools link. Uh, I'll, I'll put up both. Okay. Yeah. And there's uh, somebody put out the Caesar site. Uh, okay. So there's some coming out across the uh, uh, chat right now, if you'll look at it. Actually, if you just Google uh, decryptor or... Uh, right. hexadecimal or ask you to have exactly you get just a bunch of different tools exactly and that, that's what usually that's usually what we do is just uh tell them the google based on the uh, crypto type yes mm -hmm. and uh that way you'll find uh and you can there's different ones that uh you know that may solve it sometimes it won't solve it so you have to go to something else I have a general question. This is Dr. Roberto from Colorado State University, Pueblo. Thank you. I think this is a great, uh, wonderful program here at NCL. We've got uh, some great students that are just so smart. And uh, uh, we have our competitions in a lab here at CSU Pueblo because a lot of students don't have the resources and the bandwidth is better here. My question is uh, for the end of, for the pre-qualifying individual competition, how much help can we give them as a coach? They're, they're separated by space. And I say, you can't share the answers. You can't say, oh, the answer to Crypto 5 is, you know, whatever. Can't do that because it's part of the guidelines. But right. if somebody gets stuck, like I just can't figure this out, <clears throat> is it okay for them to say, hey, you need to use a uh, Hashcat. You needed to use Kelly Linux. Is that okay to do that? Well, uh, we don't normally, of course, everything is, like I said, we don't have the face-to-face -face activity like that, but uh, we wouldn't do that. It's, uh, that would be something they'd have to continue. We might say, are you looking at all the resources to, to, to uh, solve that problem? Have you, could you change your search uh, oh, yeah. To, yeah. to those type of things? But we're not going to go much more than doing that, that for them. So, uh, and, you know, uh, and then, uh, they should keep track of that particular, uh, uh, problem that they're having so that, okay, so now they've done the, the, uh, the preseason and they get ranked and it's not so bad if you get, it's kind of, you know, if you get ranked as a bronze, that's not a big deal. Uh, so, uh, a lot of our new students start out in bronze and they're discouraged. I'm thinking, hey, it's okay. You know, oh, no. bronze students move up to silver and eventually gold. And, and, you know, wouldn't you rather be number top 20 in silver than 395 in gold? <laughs> so, but uh, is right. it okay if I come around to each of their stations and, and say, okay, I see you're having problems with this uh, and say, okay, go, going to what you just said, did you look at all resources? Right. Can I suggest to them, hey, why don't you go to GitHub or, or go to uh, this particular website? Uh, or is that something they have to do totally entirely on their own? I think uh, it would be okay. I know that Caitlin, uh, she will, uh, uh, they, they'll ask her a question during those type of, 
and then she'll ask them, well, that she may say, well, are you doing, she'll ask, answer it with another question. So that would be okay. Saying, have you used, have you looked at all your resources? Are you doing, how are you doing your search? Are you using any, could you change your keywords? Those oh, topics. very good. Yeah, okay. I, That's good. I, 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 I think, I think it, I think it also <clears throat> relates to the preparing them for the competition. Um, the, the practice session should, part of that should be developing a checklist, developing an approach, developing a process. And so if they're playing, you might remind them, remember what we did in practice. You know? Exactly. Yes. But you, you do really don't want to go further than, than that. But I think by the practice, preparation. If, if, by practice, you mean the yeah. gym, right? Gymnasium challenges. Yeah. 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 Okay. yeah the gym. And you, so, you know, if they, if they have an approach, it, it's kind of like, um, you know, when you prepare for a game, you develop a strategy for the game. But sometimes in, once you start playing the game, you, you forget about your strategy. So <laughs> try to keep them focused on what they prepared for. That's exactly what we did. We, we did the gym games, and some of them did all of them. We got some good scores, and then they said, okay. During the gym practice, we said, I, I can't solve this or that. Well, we'll try this one. Somebody will write a Python script. You know, it's better if you look it up. So thank you. We did do a lot of those strategies. I'll remind them during the competition. Remember what we talked about at practice? <laughs> and uh, hopefully that'll maybe remind them. Because uh, yeah, I, 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 inter I interviewed a coach about competitions. And he said one of the most frustrating things he is about being the coach is he can't call a timeout. <laughs> so, you know, in other sports, you, you have that opportunity to bring the players together during a timeout, but that's not really the case in this competition. That's a, that's a good analogy. <laughs> Here's the uh, – on. Uh, oh, yeah. Okay. Crypto Kate, this, uh, if you go down, you'll find where the National Cyber League pre-guide she has. Uh, this is a great resource for your students, and uh, this talks about the preparation uh, and then about the VMs. And then my toolkit is something that's our students are really like this. Uh, it, it's uh, for the open source intelligence. And uh, she talks about the different ways to do your searches, uh, log analysis. That's another thing. We, that's great. Uh, trying to keep track. Of, so here's uh, for password cracking. Here's the Wireshark. Uh, Nmap should have mentioned that. And then here's on cryptology which she's this is her expertise areas where she's really great so she gives some here's all these different tools wow uh, very so nice she, and so uh, i shared this with my students and she said she her uh uh her twitter account and uh uh and her blog has really been hit hard since we've been sharing this information so so anyway that's may, just may so, i share this information with our students Sure. Okay. Yeah, that's definitely. Yeah, definitely. Go to her. Yeah, whatever blog. crypto Kate's putting up. Yeah. I couldn't find this on the NCO website, but it looks like she's got her own website, her own blog. Right. Well, there's a link on the on the NCL website. Uh, let me see if I can find. I couldn't that. find that. I'm on okay. it now. Okay. So if you if, went at the if you go to resources, classroom resources at the bottom. So here's resources, and then. Uh, uh, under oh, the classroom, down. yeah. Very good, very and good. And you'll scroll down and you'll see it right there. That'll take uh -huh. you right to her. Oh, so it's on the NCL website, not on the Cyber Skyline competition website. No, uh, no, no. No, that's, that's Skyline uh, is where all the competition and the, yes. and the, uh, uh, the gymnasium and whatnot, but. Uh, Thank you, that's very helpful, wonderful. Okay. I just wanted to, uh, I thought I could share that. It might make it a little bit easier if you could. Yeah, really, thank you. That was very helpful. You could see thank what uh, is really there. Excellent. Um, Dr. Roberto, how do you use the Slack channel? Do you take advantage of that? You know, I, I'm not familiar with the Slack channel. I've just kind of been doing this for the past two years. Uh, but I don't know where the Slack channel is. <laughs> is that on the National Cyber League uh, website? So 
So that's actually if you go into Cyber Skyline yeah. and oh. you click on competitions, go into your Cyber Skyline account, click on competitions, and then in small blue text, there's a link to um, the um, Slack. But I, when I talk to people, they say that Slack is very helpful. Okay. Um, you don't get answers in Slack and don't even try to get answers in Slack, but it provides a way to communicate with people that are playing and it, it makes you feel like you're more of the player community and uh, you know, there, there is information that can be helpful for you in Slack. So it's right here on the, I'm in yes. Cyber Skyline. So right can, they, this, can they use this during the competition? The Slack channel. The Slack channel yeah. is, is active during the competition, but it's it's monitored. So, uh, you know, the uh, folks in Cyber Skyline monitor to make sure that there aren't any answers given away. Yeah, so. yeah. But you yeah, can we, set when up. When I your... first started this out, we had a guy give an answer. I said, "Hey, can't do that," and I kicked him out. You know, it just uh, it was kind of rough. I didn't kick him out of the competition. I kicked him out of the room. And uh, the rest of the students then knew that I guess we can't do that because in this day and age, these kids share everything. They just can't do that here for this competition because it's just not fair. No. So, keep it, keep in mind during the team game, the oh, teams yeah. are to share with each other, but the teams are not to share with other teams. So exactly. during the team game, the sharing occurs within the team. Yeah, we, we, have, we have a lot of fun with that. We have stuff to eat. We're sometimes on one computer. We're screaming at each other. Well, that was a dumb answer, you know. So we, <laughs> these kids, as you know, are rather smart and talented. I'm working on their social skills. <laughs> you, can, so. you can set up your own Slack account, like I mentioned before. So for the team competition, we have a Slack account that we use uh, for our students. And Excellent. Great tips, guys. Great tips. In the team competition, well, we hope, I don't know if we're going to have, if we're talking about that in one of these other uh, coaches' uh, calls, but uh, the uh, uh, having Slack can help, uh, especially for online students when they're trying to, uh, uh, having someone that will uh, take the lead and say, well, we're not spending any more time on this particular one. We can't yeah. solve it. Uh, I actually had... Uh, when we first did this in 2014, the team spent like two and a half hours on one problem and they just wasted yeah. a lot of time. They tend to be very persistent and uh, I, that's, that's a strategy we, we use in our gymnasium. If it's taking you more than five, 10 minutes, it's not solvable. You gotta move on and you might see something else in a different website or a different exploit like that'll give you insight and then you'll go back to that, but you're right. Dr. Miller, you have to just kind of get the low-hanging fruit and move forward. These kids can work all day and night. They, they drink, they drink monster and all sorts of amazing things. I mean, I wouldn't be able to sleep for three days if I drank some of the stuff they did. So, <laughs> it's one of the reasons that this is more real world. If you're working in a SOC, if you're working as a cybersecurity professional. There are times where you have to put in those types of hours. So this is great exactly. training for being a professional. Exactly. Exactly. I, th I think Even, maybe it's a. I'm just going to mention that one of our students that, that's graduating has been uh, applying for jobs, and one of the uh, companies that he uh, talked to, they said they wouldn't even look at uh, any any candidate that hadn't participated in one of the competitions. Wow, excellent. Uh, Dr. Miller, you brought up something about other competitions. Our students, even though we started the pre-qualifying, got four students at the BEOCOR, B-E-O-C-R-E, -E, in uh, Colorado Springs. It's uh, put on by a corporation. And uh, they're not doing the NCL today, but they're gonna do this tomorrow and next day, and then jump into this. So. I think having other competitions, other types of challenges has really helped us, uh, our team here. Uh, they bring back the knowledge, they'll talk about it at lunch or whatever. I saw this exploit I never saw before, or, or I saw this crypto, and uh, so I think you're right. Having other competitions 
uh, is very helpful. Yeah. No, I, I agree. Yeah, I, I really, the, the more you play, the more confidence you get. Yes. Yeah, if, you, if you play um, one, it gives you some, but if you play others, you, you start to, they start to feed on each other in terms of your knowledge base. They sure do. It's a great thing. Steven, should we mention the, the, thank you, Stephen, we should mention the deadline for registering as a team because it's open right now, but it's going to close on April 25th. Is, is, is that uh, our deadline for, uh, for team registration? Yeah, I think that yes, is. Yes, it is. Uh, so let's let's uh, make sure uh, all those that are out there that you have players uh, to encourage them to sign up for the team competition. And when they sign up for the team competition, they form their own team. Team size this season is two to five, but they choose who their team members are. Stephen, any other thoughts on forming a team? Well, uh, if you... Uh have uh, some past uh, uh, participants. It's always good to help uh, if if you're re if you're assigning the the teams uh, to make sure that you kind of distribute some of the uh, the the experience with those uh, with all those teams. So uh, it, it just kind of so they'll have someone to kind of help, and that usually that's who we assign as a team leader. This is on the website uh, yep. under the uh, spring season, so the post season registration. And this is, so you just click here for that registration. Very good. And as Dan said, it's two to five players per team. Uh, it's a little bit different this year from the, from the, uh, it, so it's $10 per player on team. So, uh, every, the, the mandatory, uh, uh, course that we have or they're doing NCL, we pay, the school pays for the, uh, the team registration. And, uh, and then if a student wants to uh, participate that's just done the individual and they're not in a regular classroom, we still pick up the team competitions for that team. So, but you, you know, that's something you'd have to work out with your school, of course, but, uh, and then the mandatory, there's a, uh, a lab fee that pays for the uh, the individual uh, competition uh, registration. I see that the prerequisite there is that uh, each player must have played in the regular season. What That's if a player didn't play in the pre-qualifying? Can they still play in the team competition? You mean if they didn't get the, they didn't play at all. They probably say, I haven't had that happen that I know of. Uh, you mean where they wouldn't, they didn't even try to uh, get uh, ranked as a bronze. Uh, right. They didn't, they didn't play the qualifying games. Uh, and, uh, but they did play the regular season. If they played the regular, they would be okay. Okay. I, th I think, right. but I'm not sure how that would work. That's something we may, I may have to bring up with friends and ask him. I don't know if Dan knows that or not, but, or maybe somebody else. Yeah. I, I, I'm wondering how you play regular if you're not playing pre. Yeah. yeah you have to, uh, you have to get ranked that, unless it automatically defaults. There's a, that, uh, what is it? Pewter. Pewter, pewter. If you don't. And then if, so if you, if you ranked as a pewter, nothing, you won't get any, uh, I mean, you get ranked and all that, but it's not really the, you're not really going to get to see where you're at compared to the other uh, participants. Okay, Ken. Yeah, that's an interesting question because we have some students that have part-time jobs or, you know, they can't play the qualifying season and they can play the regular season. So I'm wondering if they can play the team season, but you guys can get back to us on that. Yeah, but send me a ping at, at dmanson at cpt.edu. I'll pass that on. But I'm, I'm curious, why wouldn't they even, you know, spend a little bit of time in preseason just to oh, warm up? Yeah, because just there's no, re, yeah. there's no requirement of how much you spend in preseason. But I would think that they would want to spend a little bit of time there. But if, right. if you want, you can send me a, a note at, at my email, dmanson at cpt.edu. Okay, very good. Thank you. All right, Stephen, I think it's about time we, we wrap up the call for today. It's been a very good discussion. And our, our next call is um, two weeks from today. And uh, we wish all of you the best of luck with your students uh, for this spring season. 
And uh, we thank you for being on the call today. Thanks, thank everyone. You. Great, great information, guys. Thank you. All right. Okay. Let the games begin. Okay. <laughs>